Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for August 18th through 24th. This week I read nine books, I watched five shows, and I listened to one book. Fear not though, because seven of those books were forget graphic, which means they were graphic novels, which means I'm not here saying I read nine full-length novels, because... Oh, no. <laughs> First this week I read Midsummer Mayhem. This is one of the book club picks for Booknet Fest, which is coming up so soon. Always excited for Booknet Fest. In fact, I'm actually doing a live stream about it today over on Sam Thoughts on Tome's channel. So if this is up before that, uh, I will hopefully put a link or something, or I will put a link regardless. In any case, this is a middle grade read that is kind of a retelling or based around A Midsummer Night's Dream. Our protagonist is an 11 year old girl who is the youngest in her family and all the other kids in her family are known for being the best at something. One of them is an actor, one of them is a dancer, one of them is a soccer star, and then there's her. She's tried all of those things before but she's never been very good at them so she's quit them pretty quickly but the thing that she really likes to do right now is bake. So yes, this is another book I've read this summer that just makes me want to eat all of the things. It turns out that her favorite celebrity chef actually came from the small town that she lives in, and there's a contest going on that she could meet him. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, that doesn't sound like a Midsummer Night's Dream at all, and that's because I haven't really gotten to that aspect of it. Firstly, her brother is in that show, so it's in and out of some Shakespearean dialogue, which is very fun because in a Midsummer Night's Dream there's another show within it where they're rehearsing a show, so I liked that aspect of it. There are also some cases of accidental magic, and if you're paying attention you might notice who some of the characters actually are. I had a lot of fun with this one and I'm really glad that this book club brought it to my attention because it was adorable and now I just want to have all of the baked goods always thank you. Another book I read in preparation for Booknet Fest is Don't Date Rosa Santos because the author will actually be there. This book is about a Cuban-American girl who lives in a small coastal town but she never goes to the marina because her grandmother originally came over from Cuba and while she was coming over her husband died and she gave birth to her mom. Her mom also fell in love with a sailor and he died at sea while her mom was pregnant with her. Essentially this seems to mean that the Santos women should not fall in love with men with boats. For the last couple of years Rosa has been doing this dual enrollment thing where she's still in high school but she's also doing the first couple of years of college with the hopes that that will propel her academic career and she'll be able to do university in only a couple of years or something like that. I wasn't quite entirely clear on how that worked. This is her final semester of school so she's trying to figure out where she's going. She thinks she knows where she's going because that university actually has a study abroad program where she could go and study in Havana which she really wants to do. She wants to go to Cuba. She just, you know, has to tell her grandmother about it because she lives with her grandmother because her mother is very flighty and is kind of in and out of her life. Something happens to threaten the welfare of the town, so she's kind of kicked into action to bring the whole town together to fix this problem. And you might guess that she meets a boy with a boat. You wouldn't be wrong. However, this romance plays a backseat to everything that's happening within her family and within the town, and I think that was the best for this particular book. This book also made me want to eat all of the things because it describes so much Cuban food that I just like that sounds delicious. Why am I not eating it right now? And you know, of course, a major character ends up to be a pretty proficient baker, so again, I just need all of the baked goods. I actually buddy read this one with Rebecca from the Tea Hags and Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book, so I'll leave their links down below if you haven't checked out their channels before. This was a reread for Jocelyn because she's read it before and absolutely loved it. She also shares the same heritage. So in our discussion, she was able to tell us a little bit more about the culture and what it feels like to be an immigrant from Cuba and the whole you want to go back to the island type of mentality that Cubans tend to have. Okay, the next seven things I'm going to talk about are all graphic novels that I read for Get Graphic, which actually is taking place from the 23rd to the 25th. Today is the 25th. Because I do my wrap-ups on a Sunday, I was like, I'm just gonna finish everything so I can talk about it all in the same wrap-up, which is what I did. First I read Maneaters Volume 2. This takes place in a world where if people with uteruses get their periods, they turn into man-eating cats. Literally. We move forward in the main story of this, but I wish that we got more of the main story at a time because it feels like a little bit of a tease and then you have to wait for the next volume. However, something I do enjoy is a lot of the volume is taken up by all of these different advertisements for things that are part of this world which are just ridiculous and I love it. This one also included this workbook of these different tasks that they would do in the health classes trying to teach people about periods and it was very 
very interesting. Then I read Our Dreams at Dusk Volumes 1 and 2. This is a manga that takes place in Japan and the main character has some damning evidence on his phone of the fact that he is gay, somebody sees it, and he briefly considers committing suicide. While he's considering that, he sees somebody fall out of a very high window and thinks that they've fallen to their death, but then suddenly they're okay somehow? But now he has a connection and sort of friendship with this person, and then also everybody who hangs out at that house, which is kind of a drop-in center. This is a contemporary, but there is one fantastical element that I don't know if I really understand, but I'm just gonna roll with it. It makes this one character even more mysterious. Next I read Monstrous Volume 1. All I really know about this going into it is it was dark and there was going to be a lot of gore in it, and that is definitely accurate. In this world there are five different major species, although you don't really learn that until later in the book, and one of my biggest problems with this was I didn't really understand what was going on for most of the book because none of the world building was really explained. But essentially this boils down to a world of magic, and some of the magic is stolen from people in different species, and sometimes the gods of this world come into play. There's also what I believe is a revenge plot line. I enjoyed the art and it was interesting, but it wasn't my favorite thing that I've read. After that I read Cheshire Crossing, which is written by Andy Weir, who is the person that wrote The Martian, and then it is illustrated by Sarah Anderson, who is the person that does Sarah's Scribbles. Dream Team, right? It turns out this is something that Andy wrote before he wrote The Martian and just put up on his website with very poor illustrations because he is not an illustrator. And once he became famous because of The Martian, people looked at it and went, we could publish this, but not with these illustrations, we can't. This is a mashup of Wendy from Peter Pan, Alice from Alice in Wonderland, and Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Basically it's five or six years after all of their adventures in the different lands, and their parents or guardians think that they aren't mentally well because they keep saying, that these places that don't exist exist, and now they're all at the same healthcare facility masquerading as a boarding school. I thought this was an interesting premise. There were also just little in-jokes from each of the different fandoms kind of thrown in there. This didn't really know what age it wanted to be for. It said it's middle grade, but these characters are 16, which means it's YA, but then every time they swore it was kind of asterisked out. It was, however, very interesting to see Sarah Anderson do a completely different art style than I am used to seeing her do. After that I read a graphic novel that is based on the second book in the Dark Tower series, which is The Drawing of the Three. This is House of so this is the time frame where Eddie has a bunch of cocaine strapped to his chest because due to circumstances he has to be a drug mule and then Roland basically helps him through that situation. I remember reading this in the book originally many many years ago and all of these scenes were very very interesting to me so it was very fun to revisit them in this format. I even remember thinking at the time that this book was very very cinematic so it just Makes me even sadder about the Dark Tower movie that we did get because, yeah, I need to stop talking about it now or I'm gonna get angry. Finally, the last graphic novel I read was Red Wall. This was originally a book series for kids that was turned into this graphic novel, and I really enjoyed this. Our protagonist is a mouse that lives in an abbey with his order of other mice, and he's always looked up to this figure from the abbey's past who was this great warrior. Suddenly there's this super evil rat that is trying to attack the abbey, and then all of these different creatures come together to defeat the rats. I thought that this was very fun, and I really wish my library had all of the old volumes of this series because I would love to read them, but they do not. They definitely do not, I've checked. It's also interesting because this was originally on my Reading Rush TBR, I just couldn't get it in time from the library, and people kept saying, I really loved this series as a kid, and I just didn't know about it when I was a kid. On to what I watched this week. I watched a lot more than I usually watch in a week, so I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly. Firstly, I watched the entire first season of Dear White People, and if you've never watched this, you should. I love the variety of characters. I love that we get to deep dive into getting to know them. I love that we get to see different scenes from different points of view. And obviously, I love the social commentary. Next, we kept watching the 22nd season of Survivor. This format is very interesting because now that we've already had somebody come back from Redemption Island and we have Redemption Island again. Basically if Matt keeps winning and comes back again, he's probably going to win. Part of me is really rooting for Boston Rob though. I would be okay if he won this season. I also finished my rewatch of Good Omens. We watched the last three episodes. And like I mentioned before, I did a whole watching vlog of this, so I will link that so you can see all of my thoughts on the show. It was definitely worth watching a second time around, especially with somebody who had never seen it before, because all of these little things come up and 
it's it's just a lot of fun. My day off work this week also consisted of watching a lot of Fear the Walking Dead. We almost finished the third season, couldn't quite watch that last episode because it was already midnight, and also I figure that these seasons always end off in a cliffhanger anyway, so we can just basically stop wherever and it's always going to be a terrible place to stop. The season has very racist and very misogynist characters and I spent a lot of time scoffing at them. My roommate and I also watched a couple of episodes of Glow. We are watching the third season, which just recently came out. And what I find interesting about this season, it is focusing much less on the actual wrestling, which gives us a lot of growth for different characters' story arcs. I don't usually mention shows I go to in person on here because I don't actually go to a lot because I can't afford to, but I ended up going to the Weird Al Strings Attached concert on Wednesday because a friend of mine had a free ticket, so why not? It is a lot of fun to see Weird Al backed by a 41-piece orchestra. And if you were to guess that I sang every single word of the song that he did as an encore, you would be correct. Finally, the book I listened to this week was Like a Love Story. This is set in 1989 and 1990 New York, and it centers around three teenagers, Reza, who is originally from Iran and recently moved to New York, Art, who is out and gay and proud and an activist, and Judy, who is Art's best friend and also a fashionista. Judy meets Reza on the first day of school and kind of gets a crush on him. However, Reza is gay, but is not ready to be out of the closet. And it being 1989 in New York, this is right in the epicenter of the AIDS epidemic. This book was heartbreaking and hopeful. I loved all of the characters so, so much. It made me feel so grateful that I was not a teenager in the 80s, and that I had no idea I was queer in the 80s, because I was only three years old when this book was taking place. It's heartbreaking, it's raw, it's emotional, it's a very impactful read, and I highly suggest it. Obviously, trigger warnings for homophobia because you will see a lot in this book from secondary characters. Interestingly enough, two of the things I consumed this week seemed like they were kind of connected, and that's because in Like a Love Story there was a passing mention of the glamorous ladies of wrestling. There was also a point where Reza went home and his family was discussing the fact that Cher is Armenian. The fact that Cher is Armenian also comes up in the third season of Glamorous Ladies of Wrestling, or Glow. So that was some weird overlap that I did not plan but was ecstatic when it happened. My next weekly wrap-up and my August wrap-up will actually be in a different location because I will be pet-sitting for my best friend again, and then after that I'm going to Orlando for BookNet Fest and I'm going to see all my friends! If you're going and you haven't done the BookNet Fest tag yet, please do it. I'll link it down below. It's such a great way to meet people before you actually meet them in person. It's such a great icebreaker. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!